we're a couple of schmucks talking about golf. Where do y'all think, or how do you feel about the golf ball rollback topic? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how they're really going to implement it in the, like you're saying, playing on these like amateur tours or, or opens. It, it's like how. It's easy for the pros like, to implement it, right? Because it's like you can check what's in their bag and stuff. But it's like, uh, I miss something. What aren't is aren't this? people Super just going easy. to continue to use old golf balls? No, not at that. So what they're talking about with the, with the rollback, obviously, like you said, in the pro level, you know, first of all, these guys only carry like six in their bag. You know, you know, some yeah. will carry carry three sleeves. Uh, but at these top tier amateur tournaments, or even like at the these mass amateur qualifiers that I play and put on by Mass Golf. Uh, they, they have starters. Like you walk up and they literally, they say playing out of, you know, the meadow at Peabody, Bud Copeland and nobody claps. And, you know, I tip my cap anyway, <laughs> cause it's fun and you tee off. So in that whole little process, you know, you've played in these tournaments probably, or if you haven't, they'll say, you know, identify your ball. Yeah. So you pull your ball out and you're like, I'm a titleist right then and there. They'll just add it. They'll just, they'll, cause these manufacturers are going to have to identify these new balls somehow. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, the, the, they got like three years, I think it's like three years for the pros, five years for us, somewhere in that, that neighborhood yeah. to try to flush out these old golf balls from the market. And for the rest of us, it's just going to be some sort of, you know, gentleman's agreement or ladies agreement, whatever you want to call it, some sort of understanding. And like I said, you know, if you and I are going out to play and it's a money match, I might say to you, like, what do you got there? And like, you're gonna have to show me. And the manufacturers, everybody's just gonna get creative with it too. The ti- the new titleists, uh, you know, maybe they'll change their font. I don't know. Maybe they'll roll right, it back yeah. and they'll call them the professional because back in the day, it was a lot of right, right. Like so, so they'll. I mean, it's it, I, it, the implementation side of it doesn't bug me as much. Um, I was just curious at all because I genuinely couldn't care less. The, the the game has uh, yeah. evolved. It's gonna go. It's gonna. It's a pendulum. It's gonna go back and forth. And that's. I go back to beating on Bryce. And I've been. On, I've been on a bit of a Bryce. I do love the guy. I think he's great. <laughs> I think he's smart and he's fun and he's engaging. And I love that he's always, always thinking and trying new things. But just pipe down sometimes. The other day yeah. he went out and he was hitting a, one of the new balls. Like because that's who they're gonna go to. These pros beta test these. You know, yeah. Help us out because that's their. Right. That's the. That's their. You know main show main show pony. Um, I think about like Ford versus Ferrari. They're going to tweak those car, those balls to these players. And then they're going to, you know, say here, here's what's bright. Here's what Bryson and these guys are playing. And we're not going to get the mm-hmm. same ball. I don't think it, they can say all they want, but um, he was saying how much different it is. It's going to be more like 20 yards difference. That's the part not where be. I think where yeah. it's just, it's yeah. a, you know, when rules change, <laughs> life changes, Oh no, it's going to be a little bit freaking different. Or you're going to have to go driver seven iron into a par five instead of driver nine iron. Like I just, I think that lack of awareness, exactly. It's, it's like, we, nobody, nobody cares. You all like Patrick Harrington was saying one day they were asking him, Patty Harrington, He's one of the best social media followers, especially if you're just trying to get better at the game because he's made it his life mm-hmm. mission. Or a couple of weeks ago, you saw articles maybe pop up saying he made a quote. He thinks that he has the ability to take any golfer in the planet and make them a single digit handicap through his, you know, teaching abilities. And he's like, oh, I've always loved Challenge being a accepted. teacher. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll sign up. Uh, and he's like, you know, I've always, you know, I love instructors and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, well, then, but why are you just putting it out there? You know, you could actually charge for this. And he was like, I have not played, paid for a round of golf in 40 some odd years or whatever it was. He's like, the moment I turned pro, well, it's, it's just understood, <laughs> you know, you're a tour pro. Cause these, so these courses are either going to just waive your green fees, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause also, you know, you hear the stories, the, the, the big ballers, like the, one of the things about Phil not being around anymore is apparently he took care of everybody he came in touch with. He was one of those guys just walked mm-hmm. around with hundreds and stacks and he was tipping mm-hmm. everybody, which is good. And I mean, those guys, yeah. that is their way of putting the good vibe out there, right? That kind of good juju in the universe. And, um, and so, I mean, I, th- I think it's just the game's going to keep shifting. The game's going to keep evolving. And whether or not the ball is new or old, it shouldn't be a point of contention. And now I even kind of hate myself a little bit for bringing it up. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. I don't think it's going to uh, affect, like, us nearly as much. No. Uh, like, I, I don't think it's going to be even really noticeable. Mm-hmm. But it's just it's just odd it's it's i feel like it's going to make golf a bit more expensive because all these companies are going to be charging more for the ball r&d and yeah. it, it's it's gonna just skyrocket there but we'll see it's it's interesting too because if if it's yeah the cost of it's going to go up but i know that the pga especially with 
kind of tying back to what we were talking about before is the PGA is like really trying to make golf more of like an affordable like sport for you know the next generation of stuff so it's just funny to me that like you want to make it more affordable but then they're going to try to pigeonhole you with like brand new balls that are going to be like a sleeve of balls is going to be like 30 bucks and I'm going to you know now I'm going to spend 66 minutes in in a in a tree <laughs> trying to find a trying to find fucking the ball, ball that yeah. I, you know I'm like what the hell this small down payment for a house just to go golfing. Like, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I hear that too. Cause I also think it's, uh, when you go out golfing, you know, what are you out here to do? Are you out here to, to you know, hang with your buddies and, you know, have some laughs, maybe some bets, stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and I'll admit, like, I'm not too picky anymore. There's certain things. I won't play a ball that's got a scuff on it, knowing how much that'll affect it. Uh, I won't play it once, you know, it's dirty. And I'm talking about in competition. If you were like, Hey bud, we're going to go grab, grab nine. I, yeah, I got, I got a handful of yellow top flights right here that I put with indoors just because my kid thinks the yellow is funny. And I, I just grab those and play because it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, right. You know, I'll buy probably a dozen or two dozen at the beginning of the year and only use them for either qualifiers or uh, like my, my league's club championship. So right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, I don't know. I got a bucket of, I got a five gallon bucket of shag balls outside and I am a little mm -hmm. picky. I do want something with a little bit of touch just, you know, after years and years. Uh, but if you handed me basically anything short of us junior clubs and, you know, that, that swing like spaghetti noodles and some pinnacles or we used to call them spinnacles back in the day, I'll Spinnacle, play. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's much more about, again, you're a baseball player, you know, you, you know, you all have these kind of these crafts too, with doing audio, you know, work, how precise you have to be and the delicate touch yeah. it takes to get it right. And how often you have to just deal with, you know, it's a whisker off, but it was good enough. You might've missed a note like barely, but you're the only one who notices, but you're still, it's going to grind right. at you. Same kind of thing. I'll hit a, I'll hit a drive and my buddies will say, ah, good ball. Cause it is going down the middle. So I should shut the fuck up, but I'll say something ignorant, like, eh, I'm a little thin. And I, right. I'm yeah. meaning to keep that in my brain. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.